Okay, look, I know things have gotten a little out of hand in the past. They've gone a little bit steering towards immaturity. You know what? We're all adults. We're all grown-ups. I'm pretty sure we can get through this uh, review without any stupidity. Come on, right? Can we do it? Let's do it, guys. Stick around. Hey, what's cracking, YouTube? I'm Brandon. Welcome to Da Vinci's Alchemist, your blue-collar guide to stinking pretty and drinking well. As you already know from the title of the video, today we are going to revisit uh, the world of one of my favorite fragrance houses, which is Zoologist. And today we're going to uh, take a look at the fragrance that's entitled Macaque. So, Macaque was created um, by their perfumer, um, Sarah McCartney, in collaboration, of course, with Victor Wong. As a side note, all zoologist fragrances are cruelty free, so that's a major bonus. So before we talk about the actual scent itself, I do want to kind of draw your attention to the wonderful packaging. If you've seen my squid video over here, over here, uh, then you'll have noticed that their, their packaging is really, really amazing. Um, but I'll go ahead and throw this out there right now. Comes in this great uh, detailed box, has a nice magnet lid on the side and has a nice little resting place has a description of uh, the fragrance here, um, details the fragrance uh, perfumer creator's name, uh, as well as all of the notes. Now, when you take it out of its snug little spot, the bottles that zoologists use themselves are really amazing. The atomizers are really awesome. The glass is nice and heavy. The sticker sits on a nice little uh, inset sort of slot, and the caps are always nice and heavy, and they are really, really snug and they have this kind of nice little embossment on the very, very top. But that is just the presentation of the fragrance. The fragrance itself, boy, let me tell you about this. Like I said, you can kind of see that the atomizer is really, really awesome. And straight out of the gate, I'm getting this nice apple, cedar, some other woods kind of poke their head around. You get a little bit of this mandarin, um, orange sort of zestiness to it. And there's tea notes in this that are really quite subtle, but they have this really amazing sort of uh, glow, like an aura to them. This is easily one of my favorite fragrances from Zoologist, definitely in like the top three to four. During the dry down, there's some nice resins, some nice uh, musky sort of feel. And for me, honestly, aside from the apple kind of uh, starting to dissipate just a tiny little amount, and that's, you know, that's what I get out of it, uh, for the most part, it's a kind of a, a nice, easy keeled, even keeled, excuse me, ride through the life of the fragrance. A really awesome scent memory that comes to me when I smell this fragrance is uh, basically of like a sake brewery. So if you're unfamiliar, sake is a brewed rice beverage that originates from you know, Japan and they essentially take the rice they ferment it without going into too many you know, details, ferment it and it uh, then has this really amazingly great adult beverage. It's not beer, it's not wine, and I'll kind of explain a little bit of that. So there is a sake brewery in uh, Forest Grove, Oregon, which is maybe 45 minutes outside of town from here where I'm at, and it's called uh, Sake One. And they, if you are, you know, if you hit it at the right time, uh, I'm not so sure about it now with the whole COVID situation, but if you hit it at the right time, um, you can go and do a actual brewery tour which is really, really awesome. They, they take you, you know, through the assembly line, they take you to the rice polishing room, and then they take you up through the brewery vats themselves into a really special and amazing place, which is the koji room. Koji is, for lack of better terminology, like a fungus. So basically what they do is they take this koji and they inoculate the polished rice and it kind of secretes amylases. Now, again, without getting too technical, Amylase pretty much converts uh, starches into sugars and allows for extreme fermentation or better fermentation of whichever product it is that you're looking for. Well, koji is relatively unique in the world of sake. So they have these great koji inoculation rooms and they are inside um, like cedar lined walls. Now, what's really great and why it reminds me of this and it takes me uh, back to this tour or even just being there in general, is koji kind of puts off this uh, this very fruity and floral aroma 
while it's working or when it's you know inside of that room. So this has some very nice fruity and uh, some white florals, some ylang ylang, and that's this really reminds me of being inside of a koji room inside of a sake brewery. One of the reasons why I love wearing macaque is because it's, to me, it's kind of du duplicitous in nature. Um, it kind of brings me up and energizes me, but at the same time, or rather at different times, it can also produce a very nice calming effect, like a meditative sort of state. So it's a great pick-me-up, but it's also a really nice fragrance to put on when I want to wind down. So before I go off into rating this fragrance, I do want to talk about the listed note breakdown. Macaque from Zoologist is an eau de parfum concentration, and the top notes are cedar, green apple, red mandarin. The heart or middle notes are frankincense, galbanum, honey, rosewood, ylang ylang, and jasmine tea. And the base notes are cedar moss, green tea, white oud, and musk. And again, there are no animal products used in the making of this fragrance. So I'm really wanting to do things a little bit differently now with my ratings on fragrances. To me, the most important thing of fragrance is the scent itself. Uh, I don't really honestly care a whole hell of a lot about, um, you know, projection and sillage. I honestly am just not that caring about performance. For me, as long as I can smell the fragrance, that's really all I care about. Uh, as long as it, you know, lasts me a decent amount of time, that's really all I care about. So I'm altering things a little bit. I had a little chat, um, well, kind of, um, well, I was watching Bragro. If you haven't checked out his channel, you should. I'm gonna go post it up here so you guys can go look at it. And I will also post it in the um, description for this video down below. He was talking about performance in fragrance in one of his videos and it really just kind of clicked for me um, when I started out doing it it was really only all about uh, trying to give you know the viewers you guys uh, kind of a good idea but again for me my take I'm really not uh, that caring but I'm, I'm gonna let you know if it doesn't perform at all always test it out for yourself don't listen to this schlub just based on what I'm saying test it out for yourself and try that was a little bit of a rant getting back on track this scent is so beautiful to me. Again, those apple elements, uh, the cedar, how it just, it, it, I get this nice uh, Himalayan and Atlas cedar out of this, and it all combines with these kind of like resinous white floral aspects, and the tea, the tea is so great. Like, I love tea fragrances, and this to me is a huge, huge winner. So my overall rating, my absolute rating for this fragrance is a 4.5. Uh, I really, really love this. And I think you should go to Zoologist's website. I'll link it down below. Get a sample of it. If you're looking for something that's nice and light, something that, um, for me, it's light, but it does last me throughout my entire work day. It doesn't die off. Uh, I can get wafts of it and it's really an invigorating and calming fragrance. It's, for me, it's a, a year-round fragrance, but I could see you know people kind of wanting to wear this more towards the warmer months. Me, I wear fragrances whenever the hell I want, so I will definitely keep wearing this in the winter occasionally from time to time. But point being, totally unisex fragrance. Bottom line, I highly suggest it, 4.5. So going into like the musical aspect, some people say that it's synesthesia. Some people say it's just an overactive uh, musical imagination. Like whatever it is, I don't know what it is. But if you didn't know about it, sometimes I hear uh, music when I smell things. It's not just fragrance. It can be being up in a boom lift at work, the smell of the diesel. It can be smelling something that I'm cooking. But typically it also is fragrances when I wear them and put them on. I hear sounds, I hear music sometimes. Well, uh, it's not so much a particular song uh, on this on this video for me, uh, but it's some, like a style of music. It's it's sometimes I'll hear you know some like Vedic chanting. Sometimes I'll hear didgeridoo. Sometimes I'll hear just like some hand drums. Point being, very uh, centering, calming, meditative fragrance. Again, that's Macaque from Zoologist. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you have not subscribed yet, please feel free to do so now. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up for a like. 
Don't forget to mash the shit out of that notification bell so that you get notified when I do future videos. And don't forget to tell your friends, and tell your friends' friends, and tell their friends' sisters about Da Vinci's Alchemist. I hope everybody out there is having a calm and invigorating evening and week and or weekend. And remember to take care of yourselves and each other, no matter where you are, no matter where you're going, no matter what you're doing. Don't forget, keep calm, stink pretty, and I'll see you on the next one.